Good afternoon and welcome to Restoration Family Worship Center, where we're located at 218 East Forest Street in the city of Ypsilanti, where our pastor is none other than Elder Tracy McMullen, and the First Lady is yours truly, Evangelist Francis McMullen. Let us go to the Word of God. I'll be reading from Psalms, the 78th number, and it says, Give ear, O my people, to my law. Incline your ears to the words of my mouth. I will open my mouth in a parable. I will utter dark sayings of old, which we have heard and known, and our fathers have told us. We will not hide them from our children, showing to the generations to come the praises of the Lord and his strength and his wonderful works that he has done. For he established a testimony in Jacob and appointed a law in Israel, which he commanded our fathers that they should make them known to their children, that the generations to come might know them, even the children which should be born, who should arise and declare them even to their children that they might set their hope in God and not forget his works, the works of God, but keep his commandments. And the word of the Lord is blessed. I read you the 78th number of Psalm verses 1 through 7. Let us stand for prayer this morning. Let us turn our hearts to God. Let's invite his presence into this room. Hallelujah. Ask God for a supernatural move on today. <clears throat> Amen. Did you come for a supernatural move of God? I hope you didn't come to see me, but you came to see him. Amen. So let us pray. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we thank you today, God. We thank you for being the good God that you are. Lord, we adore your name. Hallelujah. Oh, here we are in your presence asking for you to come, Lord. Father, we ask that you would come and saturate this place, God. Walk up every aisle, God, every pew in the name of Jesus. Lord, don't let us leave like we came in Jesus' name. For you are our healer, our way maker. God, you are the lifter up of our heads, oh God. Oh, you are a provider, God. You are everything that we need. And, and so, God, we come before you, lifting you up. For you said, if I be lifted up, I would draw all men unto me. So we lift you up, God. Draw us into you, Lord. Oh, God, we want to see you in all of your glory. Oh, you are a miracle worker. Oh, God, work a miracle in this place, Lord. Oh, God, we look for miracle signs and wonder, God. We don't want the same old, same old, God. But we want a fresh anointing, oh, God. Let it fall in this place, Lord. In the name of Jesus. Jesus, visit us here, Lord. Would you visit us here, Lord? Oh, we need you. We need you as never before, Lord. Oh, shake this community, Lord. Oh, rock this place, Lord. Shake the city, oh God. In the name of Jesus, oh God, we come against gun violence today, God. Oh, we come against the shootings, oh God. Jesus, Touch our young people today, God. Give them a heart and a mind to turn to you, Lord. Jesus, touch mothers everywhere, Lord. Oh, God, that don't know what to do, oh, God. Lord, you said if any man lack wisdom, let him ask of you that give it to all men and upbraideth not. God, we ask for wisdom today, God. Wisdom, oh God, for mothers, oh God, for fathers, oh God. Wisdom on our jobs, Lord. Wisdom, Jesus. Crown our heads with wisdom, Lord. Understanding, God, and knowledge, oh God. In the name of Jesus, yes, Lord. God, we cry yes today, God. Revive us today, God. Oh, we cry yes, God. Our hearts are open, God. Come on in, Lord. Come on in, Jesus. And have your way, God. Have your way in the worship, God. Have your way in the sermon, oh God. We need you, Jesus, to have your way, God. Yes, Lord. Oh God, oh God, oh God. Oh God of heaven. Oh mighty God. Move 
by your spirit. Move by your power. Oh God, and we won't leave like we came. Hallelujah. Oh, we lay everything down on the altar before you today, God. Save someone, Lord. Lift some burden, God. Heal a body, God, in the name of Jesus. And we expect it in Jesus' name. If you expect it, just clap your hands and give God praise. Lord, I expect you today. Hallelujah. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Praise him even more. Come on, give him praise. Come on and give him praise. Come on and bless the Lord. Bless the Lord, 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 oh my soul. And all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord.
Oh, oh, oh. 
is the confidence we have. And him that begun a good work in us is faithful. Come on, can you shout faithful? He is faithful. God doesn't start and stop. But he is faithful to finish what he has begun in us. Amen. So whom shall I fear? Of whom shall I be afraid? For the Lord, our God, is my light. That means he directs me. He's my salvation. He delivers me. Hallelujah. He protects me. Come on, say, I got all that I need. Yes, I have all that I need. Welcome, welcome, welcome. We've already welcomed you. But at this time, if you're watching via Facebook Live, virtually, YouTube, we ask that you would like and share this video. And we'd like for you to leave us some comments as well. Let us know you were here. If you have a prayer request, leave it. Post it. We'd love to pray for you. We ask that you visit our page. Visit us in person. We have Bible study on Wednesday at 6 o'clock. And God is so good. We've been talking about brokenness. And God has really been blessing us. Amen. So we need the word of God in us to keep us and so we can grow. Come on, I don't know about you, but I want to grow. I don't want to be at the same place next year, but I want to grow. I don't want to just be going through the motions. Come on, but I want to have an experience with God. Amen? Amen. So get your hearts and your minds ready for the word of God. Is there a word from the Lord? Yes, there is a word from the Lord. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit is saying. Come on, ask the Lord to open your heart, open your mind, open your understanding. Tell him to give you a revelation of the word that's going forth on today. Amen. Come on, say Lord, touch my understanding in the name of Jesus. We have a very capable elder that's going to bring the word um, on this afternoon. None other than Elder Landis Smith. Hallelujah. And before he comes, we're just going to have a sermonic selection. And then the next voice that you will hear will be the voice of Elder Landis Smith. Can we say amen? And I'm asking you to put a demand on the anointing. Come on, act like you're starving. Anyway, you know when you're starving, you be anxious. You be sitting on the edge of your seat. If you ever went to a reception, you'd be like, oh, call my table, call my table. How many want God to call your number? Come on, I want God to speak to me, to speak to my heart. Amen? Come on, let's receive Evangelist Smith. Hallelujah. And then the next voice you will hear is that of Elder Landis Smith. Amen. Hallelujah.
be where you are all today. Just to be close to you. Just to be close. Just to be close to you. Here's my desire. Here's my desire. Jesus. Praise the name of our God. Come on, open up your mouth. Hallelujah. And give Praise glory. you, God. Praise you, God. Oh, come on, open up your mouth. And Hallelujah. Give glory Hallelujah. Glory. Yes, Lord. Worthy is our Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. You know, since, since we ain't got no music right now, I'm going to do it old school. Yes. Yes. Yes, yes. 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 yes, 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 Lord. Oh, glory, glory. Yes, Lord. 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 We used to sing it until something broke in the room. Yes, yes Lord. Yes, 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 Lord. Not just for a moment. Can we just feel this room? With your voices. Yes, I, I know the piano is yes, not on right Lord now, Jesus. but could you fill the room with Hallelujah. your voices? Come on, open up Jesus. your mouth and speak well of our God. Your say name, something God. sweet to Him. Wonderful open Jesus. up your mouth Lord, and say something sweet you. to Him. Oh, how I worship Th this should God. not be a difficult moment. Oh, this should God, be a moment that is brought out, but what? By the depths of your heart. From the depths of your heart, you can just say, You are good, you're holy, you're mighty. You've been better than good. You, you, you woke me up this morning. If, if, if that's reason enough, you ought to open up your mouth and say it. You woke me up this morning. So I'm glad about it. Somebody open up your mouth and speak well of our God. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. So glad, Lord. Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, bless your name, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. <laughs> first, giving honor to God, who is the head of my life, to, to the pastor and the first lady of this house, pastor and first lady uh, McMullen. Can y'all give them a hand? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, giving honor to my wife and my children who are scattered abroad. Uh, we, we praise God for them. Uh, I'm, I'm excited because I, I love my family. It, you, you know, it just, it, it's something to have, you know, all, all them little things have my last name and they all, <laughs> they all love me. So I'm glad about it. Amen. Amen. We're going to go from Matthew chapter 14, starting at the 28th verse. Matthew chapter 14, starting at the 28th verse. Say amen when you have it. If you don't got to say, wait on me. All right, we wait. Have your way. <laughs> have your way. 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 Thank you, Jesus. The Bible declares, starting with the 28th verse, Peter responded and said unto him, him is Jesus, Lord, if it is you, command me to come to you on the water. Verse 29 says, and he said, come. Somebody say come. Yeah, yeah. And Peter got out of the boat and walked on the water and came to Jesus. But seeing the wind, he became frightened. And when he began to sink, he cried out, saying, Lord, save me. Immediately, Jesus reached out with his hand and took hold of him and said to him, You of little faith, why did you doubt? When they got into the boat, the wind stopped. I need you to talk to your neighbor. I need you to talk to me today because I need this room to be filled up. Uh, I need you to just say my topic out loud. And if you can just share this. The topic is, don't waste time watching the water. Now, I need you to go ahead and tell yourself, because this might be the encouragement you need for the rest of your life. Say, self, don't waste time watching the water. And gracious and heavenly Father, we thank you. We give you glory because you're good. And your mercy endureth forever. And your truth endures for all generations. Lord, I offer not but two fish and five loaves. You break it, bless it, and feed your people. Somebody shout amen. 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 Brothers and sisters, a couple of months back, my wife found a television show, like she tends to do, um, and it was called The Parent Test. Uh, it's a show on ABC, and the premise is that 12 families are put under the microscope in the ultimate parenting stress test that compares multiple styles of parenting. Now, I don't mind shows like this because I grew up with shows in my house like Wife Swap. Y'all ever heard of Wife Swap? And, and shows like Trading Spaces, Spouses, I'm sorry. And the premise of those two shows are virtually the same. Between the two, uh, th they are uh, trading off one of their spouses for a period of time. So, so he, I, I'll give you my wife, you give me your wife, and then we'll work that thing out for you know, a week or two weeks, however long it goes. And I always found it interesting from the point of view, because at that point I was young watching this, not in how the husbands react to new wives, but rather how the children respond. Because it's interesting an ex experiment, especially when they swap someone who is strict with someone who is very loose. Because these people go into new houses, they go into these new homes, and they all go with the same intentions. And that's if, if, if I can just share my way of life, if I can just share with them how, how I believe, then they'll transform. But one thing that happens all the time is that the kids rebel. Somebody say they rebel. Because the best that these new mothers have to offer is new rules, but with no relationship. And without the relationship, there's no foundation for these new rules to be laid upon. How can I trust what you're saying if I can't even trust you? Y'all ain't saying nothing to me. The modern church likes to put 
these concepts in conflict uh, when I feel, uh, I believe the Bible shows that these two concepts are married and not in conflict, the idea of relationship and rules. Because just the rules without relationship usually triggers rebellion. But relationship without rules usually triggers abuse. Y'all ain't saying nothing to me. Because relationships require boundaries. Jesus said, if you love me, then you will keep my commandments. Love him means that relationship. Keep my commandments means you'll follow what I say. You'll live within my boundaries. Somebody say amen. Now, in that show my wife found called The Parent Test, uh, I came in at a very interesting test that they were attempting. This experiment was laid out where the children would go to the top of a diving board, uh, which is an, an Olympic diving board. The children were unaware of what the experiment was, but the parents knew that the intention was that they can get the child to the very top of that ladder and that they would see that at the request of the parents, if the child would take that very high leap. And one thing I recognized was that all of the children, regardless of the parenting style, were afraid. All of the children, no matter what uh, the result was gonna be at the end, they all started in fear. Somebody say in fear. And all of them were scared climbing this large ladder, but for a few children that made the leap, it was a reflection on the trust in the relationship between the children and the parents. So I found myself attempting something similar with my children. They are typically nervous around the stairs, so sometimes when they wake up, we'll hear one of them whining at the top of the stairs, and we'll holler out, honey, it's okay to come downstairs. But one thing I noticed is when I would walk to the stairs and say, and my hands are out, and they will now say it, that they would be willing to leap off of that which they were afraid of. And it's not because they aren't afraid of the stairs, but they're secure in their father. Brothers and sisters, today I want to speak to someone who has a vision. I want to speak to someone who's been carrying something deep down, and they've been waiting for the perfect season to start. You've been waiting for the perfect time and perfect moment to go for it. Ecclesiastes declare in the 11th chapter, uh, verse number 4, one who watches the wind will not sow. And one who looks at the clouds will not harvest. Basically, if you're waiting on the perfect moment that I, I need to burst somebody's bubble this morning, it's probably not coming. That perfect moment is not coming. I don't know if that hurts somebody's feelings, but your perfect moment, it more likely won't come. But I want to declare over someone under the sound of my voice that if you're waiting on confirmation for you to start your business, if you're waiting on confirmation to go back to school, if you're waiting on it to write that book, I want to speak by faith those three words that were made famous by Nike those years ago just to do it. I need somebody to be ready to, to, to go for it because that perfect moment ain't coming, brothers and sisters. Can y'all say amen to me? Yeah. Our, our text takes place on the boat with the disciples. Jesus, throughout his early ministry, walked with 12 men. Uh, these 12 men were in a very unique position because what we recite from the scriptures as historical narrative was in fact their lives. Yeah, they, they, they baptized people with Jesus in the Judean countryside. They spoke with Jesus after he had a conversation with the Samaritan woman. Amen. They were with him near the sheep gate where there was a pool called Bethesda and Jesus heals the man. They were with Jesus when he was confronted about healing outside of the context that was believed to be correct. Because there are people who have it set in their minds as to how deliverance should happen and how God should work. The disciples were with Jesus when he returned to Nazareth and preached in the synagogue. And this is where Simon Peter's story begins. Luke chapter five records that Jesus was walking on the shore of Galilee and he noticed two empty boats and some fishermen who were washing their nets. They had been fishing all night long. Somebody say all night long. All night long. And they had caught nothing. And them washing their nets mean that they had given up. At this point, Jesus stepped in the boat and gave Simon Peter 
an instruction that was to go out to the deep and let down your nets. Somebody say again. Again. Yeah. And when the fishermen did this, they caught so much that their boats began to sink. Simon Peter fell to his knees and began to repent. And you would ask, how and why would he start to repent? There was no altar call. There was no soft music. But brothers and sisters, there was a sign. A sound. This, this, this is why the church has to be to move in miracles and the church has to move in power because one of the way that God pulls people is by his power. That's right. He didn't, he didn't hear an altar call. All he saw was the miracle that God had performed over his life. My Lord. So you have to be willing and we need a church that is so saturated in power, saturated in his spirit that not, there may not need to be an altar call. There may not need to be somebody uh, shouting at the end of a sermon. There may not need to be somebody saying something real soft with a sweet piano on the back. But you should be able to see the power of God. Amen. And the power of God show up so strong that somebody say, what must I do to be saved? Amen. It's, inter it's interesting that our text uh, that we're coming from today is instructing instructions to get out of the boat. And Simon Peter's story starts with instructions on what to do in the boat. Boats can have multiple meanings depending on what they're used for. For Peter, it was a place of comfort. For others, it's a tool of transition. For others, it's a temporary security in the midst of insecurity. Brothers and sisters, can I ask you a question? What is your boat? Is it your job? Is your boat your job? Is your boat uh, your family? Is your boat your relationships? I'm not going to be before you long because this all brings me to my text. Uh, Matthew chapter 14, starting at the 22nd verse, says, Immediately after this, and this being after he fed 5,000 with two fish and five loaves, Jesus insisted that his disciples get back into the boat and that they cross to the other side of the lake. The boat had a destination. So at this point, the boat was a tool of transportation and transition. I'm, taking, I'm talking to someone who's been getting nervous. You, you've been getting worried about how things are going to work. But you've missed that regardless of what they were to see on that water, there was a word over them. And that word was called the other side of the lake. Because Jesus had already mentioned you were going to cross to the other side of the lake. So you have to understand, no matter what was to happen on the water, no matter what was to happen in the in-between, that word had to stand in that they were going to make it, somebody say, to the other side of the lake. Side. And brothers and sisters, I declare that you have a word over you called the other side of your healing, called the other side of prosperity, Come on now. called the other side of this test. Yes. I need you to open up your mouth and give God a shout of praise. Praise If him. you know that no matter what you're going through, no matter what you're experiencing, yes. that there is another side. Another Somebody side. Somebody shout another side. Another side. Thank you, Jesus. And when Jesus sent the people away, he went up Trent. to the hills by himself to pray. This is such a powerful thing to understand because Jesus wasn't too big to pray. When he fed the 5,000, he prayed before he broke the bread. And now he's praying when the job was finished. Night fell while he was there alone. The disciples were in trouble far away from land. They were too far in where they couldn't turn back. Come on, y'all. And they were too far out to where they couldn't go forward. I'm going to say it again. When they went out to the lake, the Bible declared that they were far away from land, which means they were too far into their journey to turn back. But they were too far out to be able to go forward. So at, at this moment, the boat became a place of comfort during instability. What do you do when you already went and then the waves come? You have to remember that there is a word over you. <laughs> Oh, I need y'all to talk to me. Regardless of the storm, regardless of the waves and the winds, there is a promise that is over you. Tell somebody, I got a promise. I got a promise. That I'm going to the other side. I'm going to the other side. Yeah. And they were fighting heavy waves. 
About three o'clock in the morning, Jesus came toward them, walking on water. While they were scared of the storm, Jesus was walking on it. Y'all ain't saying nothing to me. I need to say that again. While they were scared of the storm, Jesus was walking on it. I'm going to take it back and say it one more time. While they were scared of this storm, Jesus was walking on it. You have to understand, brothers and sisters, that no matter what you're dealing with, Jesus is not afraid or too small to handle it. Because while you're afraid of storms, Jesus walks on them. While you're afraid of storms, Jesus sleeps during them. While you're afraid of storms, you have to recognize who Jesus is. That Jesus does not have to bend to the whims of what the storm has to say. But rather the winds and the seas obey him. Somebody shout hallelujah. When the disciples saw him walking on water, they were terrified. And in their fear, they cried out, it's a ghost. But Jesus spoke to them at once. Don't be afraid. Can I encourage somebody this morning? Don't be afraid. Can I talk to somebody else? Don't be afraid. Neither by the arrow by day, don't be afraid. Or the terror by night, don't be afraid. He said, take courage. <laughs> Why? Because I am here. <laughs> God is here. You need to be excited about that. Because that's enough to actually modify the very foundation of your life. Because if you live life as if God is here, you'll recognize, you know, I, so somebody said before, there's a type of confidence that you have. There's a confidence you have when you recognize you got help in the room. Now, now I recognize that some, so some people have not always been saved. And you have to recognize that that. that if you was getting ready to get into a fight, if you knew you had backup that you can find, there's a different confidence that you would talk with. Y'all ain't saying nothing to me. There's a different confidence you'll talk with because you're not where I don't care the size of whoever it is. I don't care how many it is. If I got help, I got help. Somebody say, I got help. Yeah, 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 because brothers and sisters, the Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When the wicked, even my foes, come upon me to eat of my flesh. The Bible declares that they stumbled and fell. Then Peter called to him back to our text. Lord, if it's really you, tell me to come to you walking on the water. With all that they had spent with him. All the time that these disciples spent with Jesus. You would think it would be more than just Peter who would respond. You would think with all the, the time that they had walked together, all the miracles they've seen, it would be more than just Simon and Peter who had enough nerve to say, call me. Oh, y'all ain't saying nothing to me. Because I, I need to talk to somebody today. Don't let others discourage you from stepping out on faith all because they didn't. Because the reality is, they could have heard the voice of the Lord too. But you were the one with faith enough to answer. I, I need somebody to be encouraged today because if you got faith to answer, it doesn't matter who talks about you. If you got faith to answer, it does not matter who turns their back on you. So you have to be most encouraged and sure that if God be for me, that ain't saying nothing. He is more than the world against me. Yeah. Yes, come, Jesus said. Whew. So, so Peter went over the side of the boat and walked on the water toward Jesus. The only thing Jesus said was come. Yeah. He didn't have a sermon that he preached to the boat. He didn't speak to the waves. He didn't give a dissertation to the winds. But all he said was come. Yeah. The word to Peter was enough that everything connected to his purpose was subject to the one who called him. Oh, come on. Somebody say, come. Yeah. He said that if it's you that didn't call me, and when Jesus calls you, you don't need a perfect plan. You don't need three points. You don't need map quest printed out and put on the passenger seat. I know y'all remember that. Y'all remember map quest? We used to print it out. We used to do it for our parents because of the age we are. Print it out and put it on the passenger seat. And they mess up all the time. We have to go find them and stuff like that. 
but, but you have to recognize God does not need that when he said come. He's not offering you a map quest when he says come. He's not offering you a speech when he says come. But he is just saying come. And when he says come, the water hears. When he says come, the waves hear. When he said come, the wind heard. They don't need to hear stop. All they need to hear is come to Peter. And the word to Peter was enough that his destiny, his steps were so ordered. I don't have to tell you how it's going to work. But the fact that you're walking and the fact that you're walking towards Jesus, that's enough. Somebody say that's enough. Oh, come on. Somebody say that's enough. Yes, Lord. I'm excited about that because the reality is we often think, and I've, I've been guilty of this, and I, I've, I've been guilty of this prayer saying, Lord, talk to my boss. Lord, if it be your will, speak in their ear. The heart of the king is in the hands of the Lord. You can turn it, Lord. Tell them tell I'm better than this. Tell them I deserve more money. Y'all ain't saying nothing to me. But the problem is, if there's a word over your life, there is no need for it to be spoken over the boss. The boss already spoke. When Jesus spoke to you, when the Lord gave you a word, everything that had to do with your life in congruence with that word was already taken care of. Somebody shout amen. But when he saw the strong wind in the waves, he was terrified and began to sink. He said, save me, Lord. Save me, Lord. Oh, somebody shouted out, save me, Lord. Jesus immediately reached out and grabbed him. And he said, oh, you of little faith. Why did you doubt me? When they climbed back into the boat, the wind stopped. The disciples worshiped him and said, you really are the son of God. And the, the sermon point that we love to take out of this story is that Peter took his eyes off the prize. I'm not saying that's incorrect because that's the reality of what happened. And it's definitely something that we need to wrestle with. But what you need to understand is that there's only two people in history that walked on water. Y'all ain't saying nothing to me. Since the beginning of time until now, there's only two people that even had the inkling to be able to walk on water. And the, the, the waves in your life that you're dealing with, brothers and sisters, is not necessarily water. The waves in your life can be those conversations. Somebody say conversations. The waves in your life can be sickness. Somebody say sickness. The waves in your life can be uh, all, all the sound that you can't get, to, can't get past. And those thoughts that are in your mind that tells you what you're not. Those thoughts in your mind that tells you you're not good enough. Those, those thoughts in your mind that tells you what you can't do. But while they're talking... You need to keep walking. Tell somebody, I'm going to keep walking. Tell yourself, say, self, I don't care how much they're talking. I'm going to keep walking. Because if I'm watching the waters waiting for stability, I'll never get out of the boat. If I'm living my life looking outside of the boat at the waters that are just moving because the waves did not stop for him to get out of the water. You know, it's easy to think that, that because he walked on water, that the water at least under his feet stilled. But the Bible never says that. The Bible only says that he got out and walked on it. So it's more than likely that the waves were still moving his feet. The waves were still, were still crashing against his legs. He would feel the water on his back. He would feel the water splash on his face. And yet he kept walking. He would feel the, the, the terror of the wind that's blowing, probably blowing in his ear. He just walking. You have to keep walking, brothers and sisters. You have to keep walking. I don't care what it looks like. I don't care how it feels. You have to keep walking. Somebody say, keep walking. I don't care what, what comes, what goes. You have to keep walking. Because the reality is there is no, no cure for life. There is no moment that life ceases to happen. The only moment life ceases to happen is when you're with the Lord. But while you're yet breathing, you're going to experience trouble. While you're yet breathing, you're going to experience burdens. While you're yet breathing, you're going to experience mess. But you have to resolve in your heart 
Whatever is happening, I'm going to keep walking. Oh, come on. Y'all stand to your feet. I, I, I need someone to, to resolve in their heart, no matter what I feel, no matter what I experience, I'm going to keep walking. I'm not going to waste time watching the water. Because if I watch for the water, if I watch for the waters to cease, if I watch for it to look right, I'll never step out of the boat. And I feel like I'm talking to somebody who stepped out of the boat in their lives. Somebody who stepped out on faith. And they feel like that they have a fear in their heart. It, it, it may be somebody online. You have a fear in your heart because you're not necessarily sure how things are going to work. You're not sure of what the next step is. You're not sure of when to go. You're not sure uh, of, of when will these winds stop? Will the wave cease? But I don't care what you're experiencing. I need to talk to somebody. If you're going through this, you need to be assured that God is a God who is there all the time. God is a God who never fails. God is a God who is assured of himself and assured of what he can do for you. That's why God said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. That, 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 that I will be with you even till the ends of the earth. Now, if you believe God and you have an assurance that no matter what you're going through, no matter what you're experiencing, that you're going to keep walking, I need you to open up your mouth and begin to saturate this atmosphere with your praise. Begin to, to, to ring through this room your, the, the sentiments of your heart. Open up your mouth. Oh, come on, somebody. Open up your mouth and shout unto God. Open up your mouth if you believe God. Open up your mouth if you know what he's going to do. Open up your mouth if you know what he's capable of. Somebody shout hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. 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 Listen, I, I, I'm excited because if you heard what, what God is saying, and if you know what God is saying, you would be assured that, that there is no moment I'm going to wait for to move. If I have that, that business in my heart, if I have that, that ministry in my heart and mind, I'm not going to wait for that perfect time. I'm not going to wait for, for, for that, that ringing yes to come through because the Bible says, uh, I think it was Eli Elijah, right, who, who, who listened to the, to the earthquake and said that he wasn't in the earthquake. And then the, the winds came and he wasn't in the winds. But in a still small voice, the, 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 there are going to be moments well, you're going to look for God and you're not going to be sure what he sounds like. You're not going to be sure how he's going to respond to you. But you have to have the faith to recognize that God is speaking. Somebody say he's speaking. God is speaking. God is speaking to you. God is speaking through you. God is sharing his truths. God is sharing the, your destiny with you. But you have to be assured that you know who God is. The Bible declares, my sheep know my voice. And a stranger they will not follow. But how often do we get our minds changed, our minds bent, our minds uh, shattered because someone else told us who we can't be. Someone else told us what we can't do. Why? Because we have not attuned our ears to the voice of the shepherd. We have let our ears be, 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 be confused and moved by the, the, the whims of another man. But God is a God that speaks. Somebody say he speaks. Oh, y'all, come on now. God is a God who speaks. God is a God who has thoughts. He said, I know the thoughts I think towards you, says the Lord, of good and not of evil and of expected end. Now, if you know you have an expected end, I need you to one more time open up your mouth, lift your hands unto God, and say, God, thank you. God, I thank you. Lord, I thank you. I thank you because this is not the end. I thank you because this is not where my story ends. I thank you because there's more in store. I thank you because I'm still breathing. And because I'm still breathing, there's more. Oh, come on, somebody shout for more. Somebody shout for more. If I got more time, I got more to grab. If I got more time, I got more to move. If I got more time, I got more to grow. Somebody shout more. Somebody shout more. Now one more time, put your hands together and give God a shout of praise. Hallelujah. There is more. Come on, this is not the end. 
Hallelujah. Every challenge is an opportunity to move forward. Amen? What looked like a challenge, hallelujah, was actually an opportunity to experience double from God. But sometimes we're afraid to take that step. Come on, we're afraid. What if? But guess what? God always has more. So if God said it, come on, you should know that it shall be well. I love what he said, the, the blessing on the other side. Some of us, we're too afraid to go to the other side. We're too afraid to get out of the boat. We're too afraid to do something that doesn't make sense to anyone else. But oh, I'm so glad that we serve a God, hallelujah, that surpasses our understanding. All God wants us to do is obey. Come on and watch God work. Anybody want to see God work in their lives? God, I want to see God work. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If that is you, if that is you on today, and you'd like us to pray for you, just come to the altar. We'll agree with you in prayer. Hallelujah. You know that God said there's more. Come on, you know that God said there's more. Although you don't see it, you don't know how it's going to happen, when it's going to happen. You don't know anything. I just know that God said it. Amen. Come on, and if God said it, come on, say, I believe it. Come on, God has said some things in my life, and I just didn't know how it was going to come together. But I'm so glad that his ways are not my ways. His thoughts are not my thoughts. They're past my
Lord, we come to you humble as we know how. Lord, we asking for your help. We're asking for your deliverance. We're asking for your power. God, we need your power right now. We need deliverance right now. Every hung down head, oh God, touch it right now. Strengthen the weak, Lord, and make them strong. In the name of Jesus, uh, touch us, Lord, like only you know how to touch us. Uh, move in us, Lord, like only you know how to move in us. Uh, oh, God, revive us again uh, and renew us again. Uh, our inner man needs strength. Uh, our inner man needs to say yes. Uh, our inner man needs to be renewed. Uh, renew us from the inside uh, and let us show on the outside. Uh, in the name of Jesus, uh, strengthen from the inside. Uh, let it show on the outside. Uh, God, we want to see you uh, working in us, uh, working us, uh, the will uh, and the do uh, of your good pleasure. Uh, help us, Lord. Uh, help us, Lord. Uh, help us, Lord. Uh, help us right now. Uh, deliver right now. Uh, set free right now. Uh, Jesus, you're able, Jesus. Touch us, Lord. You know how to touch. You know when to touch. Touch us, Lord. Move in us, Jesus. Move in us, Jesus. Move in us, Lord. Give us a mind to seek you. Give us a heart to say yes. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes to your will. Yes to your way. Yes, Lord. Give us a mind to say yes. Yes, Jesus. Yes, Jesus. We need you here. We need you here. We need you here. We need you here. Move in us. Touch us. Revive us. Strengthen us. Renew us. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. And we'll say yes to your will and to your way and to your understanding. Come on, church, and give God praise. Come on and give God praise. Come on and give Him praise. We'll say yes to your will 
in us to your way. Now, Lord, touch us. Show us your way. Show us your way. Not our way. Show us your will. Not our will. Let your will be done. And let your kingdom come in us. Uh, give us kingdom power. Kingdom power. Let your kingdom come in us. Uh, these favors. Uh, these blessings. Uh, we ask in Jesus' name. Uh, let the church say thank God. Oh, come on church. Say thank God. Oh, come on and tell them thank God. Amen, 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 amen. We may be seated in the presence of the Lord. At this time, we're going to be a blessing unto God. Huh? Um, as God has been a blessing to us. Amen. And we want you to give to God like he's been good to you. Amen. And if you're giving by phone, give by phone. Our cash app is dollar sign RW Center. Dollar sign RW Center is our cash app. And those of you that are watching us live, the banner should be just beneath me. Dollar sign RW Center is our cash app for you to be a blessing to this ministry. Let me tell you, every seed that you sow, Amen. God's going to give you double. Amen. Amen. So let's give unto God just like God has given unto us. Amen. The Bible says that if we give to God, he'll give back to us, pressed down, shaking together, and running over, shall men give unto your bosom. We're going to put the bucket, amen, by the pool pit if you want to stand up. Everybody stand up. If you give it by phone, raise your phone up in the air. Everybody stand. We're going to bless the seeds that God has given us to give. Raise that phone up in the air. Raise that money up in the air. Whatever you got, raise it up in the air and say, this is a seed that I sow. It is not a debt that I owe. Keep it up in the air. Lord Jesus, we thank you for both the giver and the receiver. God, bless both the giver and the receiver, some 30, some 60 some a hundredfold. Bless the ones that have to give and bless the ones that have not to give that they may have to give at a later date. In Jesus' name we pray. Thank God and amen. Amen. And if you're giving by phone, amen, just money. If you're giving by money, drop it off in the bucket. If you're giving by phone, you may be seated. Amen. God bless you. God bless you. Well, we're getting ready to be dismissed. All minds are clear let's stand at this time amen amen always remember Jesus Jesus always remember Jesus always keep him on your mind Lord Jesus we thank you today we thank you for the word that we received now Lord don't let the word Lord go out in vain but the Lord help us to retain the word and help us to live by the word you said that men should live by every word but by not Men shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. Lord, we heard the word that came out of your mouth. Help us to apply it to our daily lives. In Jesus' name we pray. Let the church say thank God. Amen, amen. I love you all with the love of God.